Good day chaps, so today's video is a quick one and we're going to cover the Cobra, an STT project that will be going into the World of Tanks computer game shortly. We're going to be looking at the background of the project and not the vehicle as it will be in the game, as no vehicle can always be true to life, for the sake of game balance etc. The Cobra was the result of the 7th Technical Staff Course for the Fighting Vehicles Design Division, while part of the British School of Tank Technology, or STT, at Shrivenham in November 1954. In the project, the course participants were to design a new medium gun tank with the following set of criteria. The weight was not to exceed 35.7 tonnes, and the vehicle had to be able to cross a Class 40 bridge, have a stabilised gun capable of defeating 150mm of armour at 60 degrees, that's 233 millimetres, at 2,000 yards, or 1,828 metres, and hitting a 7.6 foot opportunity target within 10 seconds, with no less than a 60% chance on the first shot. Additionally, the vehicle had to be well protected, with no less than 120 millimetres at 60 degrees, or 240 millimetres of armour, all over the frontal arc. The crew had to be three men, with the commander doubling up as a loader, unless alternative solutions could be found in the project. The team's first obstacle was the main weapon, a kinetic type, a kinetic energy gun, that fires APDS type shells, as its primary munition relying on the velocity and energy to perforate the target was unsuitable. To mount a weapon of that period that could meet the criteria would have required a platform bigger than even the new Conquer tank, and thus would exceed its weight limitations. The calibre required for such a gun, at that time, was calculated to be 214mm. It was therefore decided that a 120mm low-velocity chemical energy type gun would be used. This type of gun uses high-explosive anti-tank, or heat rounds, as its main offensive munitions. This is because the shaped charge rounds require a lower velocity to work correctly, and therefore they can be fired from lighter guns, and yet still have excellent penetration properties in the 400 to 500 millimeter range, unaffected by distance, unlike kinetic energy rounds. Heat rounds used to be called chemical energy rounds, but the process used in the perforation is still via kinetic energy. With this chosen, it was more down to getting the gun laying, loading, and shots on target in the 10 seconds that would be the primary focus. The teams also looked at how the crew would work if reduced to a mere three men. It was quickly decided, as proven in real-time combat, that a commander could not spend time loading shells and effectively doing his role of commanding the tank. The weight and size specifications given would have not made adding a loader possible, and it was therefore decided to add an autoloader to the tank. Because the early autoloaders fed round straight from the turret bustle, and the carousel types and more advanced designs were still not a reality, the team required a gun that lined up with the feeder regardless of the gun's elevation, depression or rotation angle. This in turn led to them using an oscillating type of turret. An oscillating turret is a form of turret for armoured fighting vehicles found on both tanks and armoured cars. While predominantly French in use, other nations have tested out various versions. The turret design is unusual in being made of two hinged parts the upper and lower half. The main gun is on the upper inner half, with elevation and depression of the weapon relies on the upper part of the turret moving relative to the lower part around a pivoted trunnion point. The gap between the two turret halves is normally covered or sealed by a distinctive visible rubber or canvas bellows. Oscillating turrets have some advantages. Notably, the gun can be placed on a higher internal breech and does not need to be raised or lowered conventionally. The downsides are weakness to nuclear, biological and chemical protection due to the gap between the layers and the placement of heavy armour. With Cobra, the oscillating design had been accepted. The main ammunition, as discussed, would be heat. However, Hesh was also carried to give the best all-round offensive capability. Both shells have similar velocities. The heat round would be fin-stabilised due to the developers sticking to the British penchant for rifled guns, which in the 50s still offered better accuracy over smooth bores. Smoke and canister would be kept as ready rack rounds that could be used in an emergency. 54 rounds were to be carried, 9 in the mechanical autoloader. For accuracy, the tank had a conventional rangefinder for distances out to about a thousand yards, and a stereoscopic rangefinder for further ranges. Finally, a spotting machine gun was fitted for when meteorological conditions warranted it. The main gun's depression was minus 10 degrees, but with an elevation of plus 20 degrees, with the Quaxel machine gun having the same. 
The rate of fire with the autoloader was 10 rounds per minute for one minute and 6 rounds per minute thereafter. Both the heat and hash rounds would weigh in at 60 pounds or 27 kilograms and have a muzzle velocity of 792 meters a second. The turret armour was 120 mm at 60 degrees for 240 mm effective, with a curved compound angle in excess of 300 mm in places. This was the same for both the upper and lower halves of the turret, resulting in a space layer between the two plates offering potentially 600 mm effective armour in certain places and angles. The Cobra's hull was rather simple in many respects. The base was to be that of a Comet medium tank. Five pairs of road wheels either side, with Christie type independent coil springs external to the hull running down either side, with four Newton type double acting shock absorbers, two front and back pairs. 18 inch wide tracks with 127 links per side were carried over. The power pack was provided by a Rover Meteorite 202 60 degree V8 petrol injected engine, giving 495 brake horsepower at 2800 RPM coupled through a Merritt Brown 5-speed epicyclic gearbox. Top speed for the Cobra was calculated at 27 miles per hour forwards and 9 miles per hour in reverse, with a maximum range of 120 miles. The rear decking plates were to be taken from a Centurion tank. Various types of armour were considered. Spaced armour was effective versus Hesh, but depended on the thickness of the first plate in the air gap. In testing it was found that as the thin plate offered little protection for follow-up strikes, the first defeated round having effectively crushed the space layers together while simultaneously knocking out the primary weapon from the blast. Base armour also, despite what you may think, is not particularly effective versus shaped charge rounds. And to Bezo, the gap has to be greater than at least five times the diameter of the projectile's cone. It was also noted that the addition of destroying applique armour in the shape of track links over the front was very effective at stopping hesh rounds and doubles up as a useful set of spares. The Cobra team also looked at using ribbed armour. This was considered very effective versus heat and APDS rounds as well as hesh. However, it is also very expensive to make comparatively, as it has to be cast into the shape to work correctly. The team settled on a well-armoured line-of-sight thickness option, with 120mm at 60 degrees on the front. This would offer 240mm of effective armour on the upper and lower glassy plate. The sides, though, to compensate this, were very thin, at 25mm only, although burster plates could be added to protect the running gear where required. Overall, the Cobra was similar to other contemporary oscillating tanks of its period on the layout, but had considerably more armour at the cost of mobility. The weapons chosen would have been very effective for that period, although later advances in explosive reactive and laminated armours would have meant the kinetic energy gun would have still been required. Ultimately, Cobra's fate would have been sealed by the requirement to operate on contaminated ground, something that oscillating turrets have a problem with due to that gap. One wooden model was made, and extensive books written about the Cobra at the time, but no further action took place. Although the model seems to have long since have been lost, the research documents and material written can still be found in the archives at the Bobbington Tank Museum today. Well guys, I hope you liked that. If you did, give us a like and subscribe, let us know any feelings below, and we'll put the full specifications up on the blog as soon as we get round to it. Until next time, doodle pip.